Hello, good evening. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0, live from the Ham Shack. Today, we are going to be looking at the brand new Connect System CS750 DMR radio. Right here. I just got these in. I can see the screen. Channel three. Right there. It basically looks just like the CS700. Um the the fonts and the menus and the LEDs uh, on the on the face are, are a bit different. The fonts are a bit different. Uh, it, it's got a voice that talks to you now. You can turn that off in the menu. Um, you know, other than that, it pretty much looks like the CS seven hundred did. Channel five. It does, of course, say seven fifty, being that this is the UHF model. Um, the 751, of course, is the VHF model. Uh, I haven't put the belt clip on this one yet. Uh, uh, the the battery is the same as the CS700, so if you have an extended battery for the CS700, uh, the, the CS700 and the 750 both come with a, seven, uh, with a 1700 milliamp battery. They do sell an extended battery that's 2000 milliamps. It's not that much bigger. But it is a little bit bigger. So... When we turn it on, show you guys here. Comes up and it says CS750 DMR radio. That's default. I showed a I shot a code plug into this a minute ago. You'll see an unprogrammed channel like that. You hear the the soft tone. It's no longer that really really annoying tone. I had heard, I'd read online, I think that these were supposed to be front face programmable. I can't find that in uh I can't find that option in the menu. Uh I pro I program I shot a code plug into it real quick. Um so i I'm gonna demonstrate the software now. Just one second. Let me flip over to the screen and I'm gonna demo this demonstrate the software for you guys. Alright, this is the software version 3.03.10 right here uh, brand new version they just put this up I looked a couple days ago and it was uh, 3.03.09 so both versions are still up there so I plugged in the radio to the front USB port on my PC I used the old CS700 cable uh, so the cables are the same I click, uh, I click read here and then I click OK this is just the stock code plug that they shot into the radio at the factory to uh, load it up and make sure it would take a program. So these are your options down here, the left side, um, the general settings. If you click on the menus under the general settings, it's uh, it doesn't do anything. you got to double click it and it'll open it up over here. And it also puts a tab up at the top right there. So tab at the top opens over here. This here is your radio alias which we saw when we turned the radio on. Radio ID is my subscriber ID. rest of this stuff I usually leave blank. Zone is your zone. 16 channels per zone, usually talk groups. Uh, being an HT I would set each zone for a specific repeater because you're not going to be able to get into multiple repeaters from an HG, HT, generally speaking, unless you got two repeaters that are really close to one another. Digital and analog uh, channels can go into this radio. So just so you know that. Most of your time is going to be spent right here on DMR services. You can set predefined text messages kind of neat. Your contact info is going to be here. Set your private or group contact ID. Your caller ID is going to be your buddy's subscriber ID or your talk group. Talk group 1 for worldwide, 13 for worldwide English, 2 for metro, 3 for North America, that kind of thing. Most of your time is going to be spent there. Creating all your digital contacts. Once you got that done, then you'll come back up here to channel and start throwing your repeaters and your talk groups in there. Something new on this radio is it's got the 2 and the 5 tone alerts on it. Kind of neat. 
The old one didn't have that. So that's a look at the software. I'm going to throw a code plug together. All right, so I put a code plug in here. I've got two zones. Dallas and the South Lake. I've got my subscriber ID and I just left the radio alias as CS750. Usually I put my call sign in there but whatever. You put whatever you want. I've got my contact list here. Group call. Most of them. I didn't put any just for the purposes of demonstrating this video, I didn't put any uh, private call IDs. And then I've got my digital channels all right here. So what you can do is take up this uh, digital channel section and go into your zone and add the channels you want to the zone in the members group the members group here you just add whatever channels are in this is the available channel list and this is what's in the member I, I added these manually on the right and then of course you can do the same thing with South Lake also or with your other zone I called it South Lake South Lake uh, there's a repeater in South Lake it's a city over here by me and there's a repeater in Dallas. So I just separated the zones and then you create the channels over there in the channel section uh, under digital channel right here by repeater and talk group and then you separate them out in the zone section and add whatever you want to to the zone here. Pretty neat. Works pretty well. Uh, software seems pretty tight. Also the box is pretty much the same. It does say CS750 UHF on the sticker on the side. Other than that, the box is the same and the charger seems to be the same. Uh, since the battery is the same, the charger is probably exactly the same. But the manual is for a CS700. CS600, 700, uh, 601, 701. Uh, there is no manual for the 750 yet. I assume they'll probably be making one. Um, this radio kind of came up out of nowhere. They've been talking about the CS800 mobile unit, which uh, I should have some of those in a couple of weeks. And the CS7000, that multi-protocol um, unit that's going to do out of the box, it'll do analog, DMR, and D-Star. And then as time goes on, it'll be firmware upgradable to do uh, Fusion, IX, or NXDN, P25, Phase 1, and or 2, uh, I, I, IAS or IDS or whatever it is, it's going to do It's gonna do all those. I don't know if you're going to have to switch back and forth and kind of choose one. I don't know. But um, it's been promised for a long time. We haven't seen it yet. Uh, anyway, no manual. So what I said earlier about the... Uh, front face programmable I can't find it if if in fact this radio is supposed to do it I can't figure out how to do it just I've been looking at it for about an hour I got these in uh, they were on my actually I got it delivered today around 6 p.m. Uh, UPS dropped them off and uh, I was I was actually home at the time so I opened it up and started taking a look at it they um, they seem pretty straightforward I haven't had a chance to test it in the real world yet I'm going to do a video presentation coming up probably in the next week or so uh, just on overall DMR, and it'll probably be a running series. Um, I have, at, at last count, I have two, three, four, five, six, seven different DMR models, uh, eight, including Motorola, if you want to count Motorola, uh, which I don't sell Motorola radios, but I sell the other ones, and most of them are from China. Um, a, seven different brands of DMR HD radios. Uh, two of those companies are making mobile units right now also. Uh, so I'm going to do a DMR presentation on uh, just basically going through all those, the good, bad, and the ugly of them all. Um, the TYT MD380 
is supposed to have front face programmable uh, capability. I've got a few of those on order, uh, so I'll, obviously I'll do another video on those as soon as those come in. Uh, so I love DMR. I've been on DMR for about a year and a half. Uh, I've never used D-Star. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, there's a few fusion repeaters going up around me. I've got one of the small, one of the uh, FT1DR Fusion HTs. Um, I don't carry it. Uh, when I bought it, I bought it at a ham fest and I carried it for about a week uh, just using it on analog because there's nothing up on digital yet in my area. And the performance on it was meh. Uh, the range on it, quite frankly, is not as good as my Waxon UV8D. Um, it does have APRS. That's a cool feature. Uh, it kills your battery life. But if you've got a um, car charger for it or you got to uh, um, take it to work and um, have it on a desk charger, it uh, it has that capability. So, but I love DMR. I've been on DMR for a long time. It's a great system. A couple of advantages that it has. If you've if you watched uh, Kent and I's DMR presentation, a couple of advantages that DMR has over all the other digital formats is, uh, number one, it has two time slots. So it's basically two repeaters in one. Uh, you can have two different conversations going on between two or more people at the same time on the same repeater, repeater and they never hear each other. Um, so you basically get two repeaters for the price of one. Um, there's different networks out there. Motorola has a network. That's the popular one in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, Hytera has a network. I've been talking to the guys down in Laredo, Texas, about joining the high. They have a Hytera network, uh, a couple of Hytera repeaters down there. I've been talking about... Uh, maybe getting a, high, a repeater put up in this area because uh, it's just another network, more places to talk, more people to talk to. But the coolest thing about DMR, in my opinion, is besides the two time slots, is there's, at last count, there were 36 manufacturers worldwide making radios for DMR. You've got Icon making D-Star. You've got Yezu making Fusion. you got Connect Systems that's threatening to make a D-Star and a radio that'll do both D-Star and Fusion and DMR. When and if it comes out, I'm sure it'll come out. It's just a matter of timing. But when it comes out, we'll see what happens at that point in time. But, but, uh, but you know, until then, you've got one manufacturer for D-Star and one manufacturer for Fusion and 36 for DMR. Kind of simple. Um, so there's some drawbacks to DMR. It's not perfect, uh, but neither is everything else. So uh, my personal preference is DMR, and so I'm going to talk a lot about DMR. I will be having some some fusion talks as well as soon as uh, as soon as there's actually a fusion system online and and working in this area do some testing with it uh, maybe see if I can borrow somebody's FTM 400 radio because I'm not planning on getting one myself but uh, so there that's that um, I'll do some testing with the CS 750 this week and probably post comments on this video about how the testing went. Um, and I'll probably uh, be able to tell, I'll probably have an external tent antenna set up uh, with the testing phase when I do the demonstration of all the different DMR radios that I have. So, 73 guys, appreciate the uh, time, uh, appreciate the uh, efforts. I've been watching the videos uh, count out there, and the first two or three videos I put up seem to be generating a lot of response. So, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel, and uh, if you want to see anything specific, let me know. I love reviewing new radios, new items, new gear and uh, just talking about amateur radio in general. 73, have a good one.